Joining me now, Delaware Senator and the Biden campaign's national co-chair, Chris Coons, from the Biden campaign headquarters in Wilmington. Senator, thank you very much for, for being here this morning. Um, you hear these reports that we just heard from Lucas Tomlinson and Trey Yanks that Israeli IDF forces pulling out except for one brigade. What is your reaction to this very big development on the ground in Gaza? Well, Martha, first, it's important to remember how this all began six months ago with a brutal, a barbaric attack by Hamas terrorists who massacred roughly 1,200 Israelis. And in the six months of this campaign against Hamas in Gaza, thousands and thousands of IDF troops have done their best to carry out a campaign to eliminate Hamas from Gaza. There will still be several thousand IDF troops, that's what a brigade is, uh, in Gaza after this announcement this morning. But I presume this is a tactical decision by the IDF and Israeli leadership in the face of a threat of a real attack from the north, from Hezbollah, or a direct attack from Iran. And it's important for all of us who support Israel to be clear that we will continue to defend Israel against Iran or any of its proxies in the region. So you see this as a tactical regrouping, not as the end of the war. Is this the ceasefire that President Biden clearly laid down his request for? He said, we will not support you if we don't see changes. Are these those changes or not? Well, I wasn't in that conversation between President Biden and Prime Minister Netanyahu, but there are negotiations in Cairo today about a possible hostage release and ceasefire. As you know, Martha, thousands and thousands of Israelis have been protesting uh, in Tel Aviv and throughout the country about the lack of progress on a release of the hostages. You'll be hearing from a hostage, uh, someone who's been released soon. I've met many times with hostage families. It is tragic that Hamas continues to use civilians as human shields, continues to hold these hostages, and continues to terrorize them um, now for 184 days. So, so it's my hope that the changes that were asked for, the delivery of humanitarian aid, the deconfliction of possible strikes into Gaza with where humanitarian aid is being delivered, and a conduct of the future campaign against Rafah to finish the job against Hamas, in a way that will minimize civilian casualties. I'm hopeful that we're going to see all of those changes unfolding here in the days ahead. So why wasn't, why didn't President Biden make it contingent that if you bring about a ceasefire, it will be in return for hostages? No ceasefire until the hostages were, were returned, are returned completely, has always been Netanyahu's goal. So it looks like we're seeing it in reverse and just hoping that it will result in the release of hostages, Senator. Martha, I think we're mischaracterizing what's going on. There will still be thousands of IDF soldiers in the south of Gaza. I have not heard President Biden call for a ceasefire without the release of hostages. I think that is the direction that all of us are pressing for. Um, and I'll remind you that President Biden has repeatedly pushed Qatar and Egypt, who have direct communications with Hamas, to press Hamas harder to release the hostages they are holding. I think that's what all of us have been hoping for. In my last meeting with Prime Minister Netanyahu in Israel, that's what I was encouraging, uh, was continued negotiations. And I've also directly communicated with Egyptian and Qatari leaders on the urgency of a hostage release as a condition for any ceasefire. So I just want to remind our viewers of the sentiment of protesters. This is from a few months ago. There were a lot of student protesters. We continue to see them all the time against the U.S. policy in support of Israel. Watch this. You have a whole generation of voters coming up who are going to be able to vote in this next election. And if you don't stop this genocide now, you will not get these votes. So we saw hundreds of thousands of uh, vote uncommitted against, essentially, President Biden. Um, we've heard for quite a while about the tensions that exist within the White House. The president initially said he was rock solid in support of Israel's efforts here. Have the protesters won at the White House? No. Let me remind you what just happened. Two weeks ago, President Biden signed into law our annual appropriations bill that includes $3.8 billion in support for Israel. I think this is a tactical disagreement that began with Prime Minister Netanyahu insisting he would go into Rafah. Let me remind you, 
In Rafah, there's more than a million Palestinian civilians who have fled from the north and the center of Gaza. They are now trapped up against the hard border with Egypt. And what I have been saying and what I believe President Biden has been saying directly to Prime Minister Netanyahu is before you go in at scale and try to finish the job against Hamas, make sure that you allow for humanitarian aid and for those civilians trapped in Rafah mm. to move out of the way before you conduct this last stage of the ground campaign. That's what I understand the disagreement to be about. Um, I want to ask you a quick question about Ukraine. Um, but first, I want to ask you this. It, what do you say to those who say that this move is going to be music to the ears for Hamas and for Iran, and that their ultimate goal of eradicating Israel from the Middle East, if they see the United States pressuring Israel to pull back, will be exactly what they want? Well, let's move on to the supplemental, which helps answer that question. The Senate, controlled by Democrats, passed with a big bipartisan margin a supplemental that President Biden requested that includes aid for Ukraine, humanitarian aid, and $14 billion in additional support for Israel. It's been waiting for action by the House for weeks now, and it's my hope that Speaker Johnson will put it on the floor this week. It will show Iran strong bipartisan determination to continue to support Israel in the face of Iran's threats if that supplemental passes the House this week. All right. I'm just going to ask you one more question on this, and that is, do you believe that there is an imminent strike coming from Iran in retaliation for the killing of two top commanders in, uh, in the Iranian forces? Uh, well, what has been publicly released uh, by our government is a concern that there is a likelihood of an Iranian strike. Uh, I can't get into classified material, but I think it's important that we continue to show strong support for the defense of Israel that we continue to support the Iron Dome and other ballistic missile defenses that we've jointly developed, and that we make it clear we will defend Israel mm -hmm. against any Iranian proxy attack or any direct attack well, Let me attack ask you Iran. one quick question before you. 33 members of the House, including Nancy Pelosi, wrote a letter saying that they wanted to rescind even the current weapons delivery to Israel. What do you say to them? Look, in the face of a possible attack from Iran, I don't agree that we should uh, in any way constrain or stop the delivery of defensive material that is essential for Israel's defense. All right. Uh, we will see where the U.S. support of Israel goes um, in the wake of all of these developments. Senator Coons, thank you very much. Good to have you here this thank morning. Thank you, Martha. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.